Today's video is brought to you in part by nobody. Why? Ads are weird. Like, really weird. Perhaps no ad is more weird and has been more universally panned than Pepsi's infamous Live For Now. This might be the most hated ad in history. It's been buried by the original creators to the extent that finding a clean version of the ad for this video was one of the more difficult parts of its production. The ad was panned by almost every news outlet left, right, or center, and every internet commentator. It's hard to find anyone to defend this monstrosity. But what very few people seem to have brought up while talking about this ad is how similar it is to one of the most famous commercials in TV history. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing. This is Hilltop. The ad that made McCann Erickson one of the most sought-after ad agencies in the world, and an ad so popular that I'm willing to bet that even if you've never actually seen the commercial, you've heard the jingle that underscores it. The ad originally aired in 1971 at the tail end of a civil rights revolution in America, and it features a fairly diverse cast of young people chilling on a hilltop in Italy, singing the iconic jingle, and coming together to help one of the world's largest companies sell one of the most unbelievably unhealthy products the world has ever known. Nearly 50 years later, during another period of protests over race and civil rights and policing, Pepsi attempted to do virtually the exact same thing. A fairly diverse crowd all gathered together and in one strong, solid voice saying, please buy Pepsi. Neither of these ads are exactly ethical in their messaging, both are exploiting a social movement to try and sell a product. So why is one regarded as one of the best TV commercials of all time, and the other almost universally hated? It probably starts with the actual plot of the ads themselves. Pepsi's ad is basically a three minute short film featuring a celebrity guest. The ad opens on some random waste of space shot setting up the scene, but pretty quickly we end up downtown in some nondescript city where we see two things happening at once. First, a protest. Second, our celebrity guest in the middle of some sort of photo shoot. Pretty quickly the two things become one and Jenner ditches her photo shoot to join the protest and more importantly, to drink some Pepsi. And it's at this point that we realize there's actually some tension here because the cops just showed up. It's impossible to view this scene without the context of the time in which it was released in, a time in which there was news almost every day of police and protesters, to put it nicely, clashing. Luckily, however, this isn't one of those protests that ends up in police violence or rioting or anything else, but it's only because a magical can of Pepsi swoops in to save the day. Coke's ad, on the other hand, is much simpler in its conception. There's a nice crowd of young people chilling on a hill, drinking Coke, and singing a song. But much like Pepsi's ad, it's also important to view this ad with the proper context. This commercial first aired on TV in 1971, following a very long period of similar protests on American streets. The ad aired only three years after this TV first, and only a few short years after the 1964 Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, and a whole host of new legislation that basically changed the legal status of racism in America. It's completely fair to criticize the ad by saying that it's just riding on the coattails of one of the most transformative social movements in American history, because it is. And certainly that was a criticism levied at the ad at the time of its release, but somehow that hasn't stopped Hilltop from becoming one of the most well-regarded commercials in TV history. I think it actually helps a lot that there isn't a celebrity guest in Coke's ad. Pepsi has a long history of using celebrity endorsements to try and sell their products, so I suppose I can see why they thought this would be a good idea, but if you're specifically trying to present an image of a diverse crowd of young people gathering, it probably helps if the camera isn't constantly focusing on one person in particular. Hilltop features a cast of basically completely unknown actors, probably intentionally, but more importantly, Coca-Cola, the actual product, isn't really a character in the ad. Certainly, you see the Coca-Cola logo, like, a lot. There might even be more bottles of Coke in Hilltop than there are cans of Pepsi in Live For Now. But in the case of Live For Now, Pepsi is the hero of the ad. This commercial features plenty of people and a celebrity guest, but it's a can of Pepsi that ultimately saves the day. The overall message of this ad is a corporation sitting on a fence, not even choosing a side, but claiming that their product can somehow put an end to one of the most heated issues in American history. Hilltop is different 
if there's a hero to the ad, there's the crowd, I guess. And speaking of the crowd, it's actually important that they're very diverse in all ways but one. Every single person in this ad is very young. This is important because almost all of the work done in the decades leading up to this ad's release was done by young people. The overall message of Coke's ad isn't, our product will save the day, it's good job. The company doesn't sit on a fence, really, I guess. It comes out supporting an issue that's basically already been settled, at least legally speaking, but it does pick a side and is very specific in congratulating the people responsible for this change. But why is this important? It's been five years since Pepsi's infamous ad, and it's been all but forgotten at this point. But it's not like other companies haven't tried a similar tact with advertising. Everyone from Gillette to Axe to Airbnb have made commercials directly in response to social movements going on at the time of their release. But largely, I think these ads are almost universally despised, and it's not really hard to see why. Certainly, if you disagree with the message that an ad is pushing, you're just going to hate it. But even the ones who agree are equally likely to just feel like they're being pandered to and not respond. Certainly this was true even in the case of Hilltop at the time of its release. I think this might lead companies to think that the sort of socially aware advertising just isn't worth the risk, and that's not exactly an unfair conclusion to come to. But I personally would really love it if that wasn't the case. Advertising has been a part of almost every media form since its inception, and it doesn't seem like that's going to change anytime soon. Social media and the internet more generally, where almost all media lives these days anyways, is almost entirely ad-supported. And as long as I'm going to be forced to see ads, I'd really love it if they were more interesting. Whether it's Volkswagen and Tang's advertising after the moon landing, or of course Coca-Cola's Hilltop commercial, ads that are at least aware, in some sense, of the world around them can be some of the most interesting to watch and most memorable. And to be clear, it's not actually rocket science. Yoplait, a yogurt company of all places, managed to make one of these sorts of ads that, all things considered, was fairly well received. Maybe 9 out of 10 attempts at this kind of advertising fails miserably. I doubt the percentage is that bad, but even if it is, isn't it still worth it to not have to sit through the same generic template of a commercial that we see in front of every single YouTube video? I don't know. Maybe I'm alone on this one, but thanks for watching anyways. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees.